Other examples of the simple rational functions are when um, you don't have anything necessarily being added or subtracted to your function, but there's an x in the numerator and the denominator. So I've given an example here with number values, but it would be ax plus b over cx plus d would be an example where a, b, c, and d are coefficients and x is just your variable. So I've used the example 3x plus 5 over x minus 1. So the vertical asymptote of the graph is the line where x equals negative d over c. So what they've done here, guys, is solve for the denominator equaling 0. So if you solved or set cx plus d equal to 0, you would subtract the d and divide by c. That's how they get negative d over c. So your vertical asymptote for our example would be wherever x minus 1 equals 0. So you would add the 1 over and your vertical asymptote would be at x equals 0 or x equals 1. So that's really all we're doing. And we've sort of talked about that in chapter 3 when we looked a little bit at domain and range. So your horizontal asymptote so vertical asymptote where denominator equals zero. Your horizontal asymptote is going to be the value when you divide your lead coefficients. Remember, your lead coefficients coefficient are the numbers attached to the variable. So a over c comes from dividing the a and c value. So in our example, the horizontal asymptote Really, you can't see it, but there is a 1 in front of your x. So your horizontal asymptote is at whatever 3 over 1 is. So your horizontal asymptote would be at 3 in this particular example that I've come up with. So that's all there is to it when you have an x in the numerator and denominator, x to the first degree. So let's go through the process of doing everything one time. So I'm going to do number 7, which means you guys will have to do number 6. So we want the asymptotes, the intercepts, domain, range. So the vertical asymptote, if we set the denominator equal to 0, so that would be x plus 2 equal to 0, the vertical asymptote is going to be at negative 2. Horizontal asymptote. This will be the same as our example. We have a lead coefficient of 3 over a lead coefficient of 1. So that's going to be at y equals 3. So positive 3. So again, without even graphing any points or putting the function on the graph, I know that my domain from left to right is going to skip that vertical asymptote. We can't include that value. So the domain will be from negative infinity to 2, skip over that, and then keep on going to positive infinity. The range from bottom, range from bottom to top will skip that horizontal asymptote value. It'll approach that value, but not actually um, ever reach it or get there. So that will be negative infinity to 3, skip 3, and keep on going up to positive infinity. Now the x and y intercepts. If we're trying to find the x-intercept, that's when you're finding x which means you're plugging in 0 for y. So I'm going to make this 0 equals 3x minus 6 over x plus 2. Some people like to cross multiply. I just like to multiply by the denominator 
over one, but you have to do it to both sides. Because when you have one on the top and one on the bottom, it really just equals one, and it cancels out. So then on the other side, anything multiplied by zero still leaves you with zero, and you solve for 3x minus 6. So you would add the 6 over and divide by 3. So 6 divided by 3 will give you 2. So I'm just going to plot that a while. The y-intercept is the nice one where all you guys have to do is plug in 0 for x and you're solving for y. So any x value you guys see, you're going to plug in 0. So this will become y equals 3 times 0 minus 6 over 0 plus 2. So negative 6 over 2 is going to give you negative 3. So 0, negative 3, I'll just plot that a while. And then there I have my two points for that branch already. But I did go ahead and make a table. So again, just put it into your calculator. But again, make sure you're plugging it in correctly. So if you guys are trying to graph this, this is where I was saying about good practice of putting the numerator and denominator in parentheses. So this would be in parentheses 3x minus 6 divided by in parentheses, x plus 2. The numerator and the denominator have to be in parentheses so that your calculator understands that whole expression should be in the top and then that other second expression should be in the bottom. So when I plugged it into my calculator, I got negative 1, negative 9, negative 3, 15, which is a little large to plot, that's okay, negative 6, 6, and 6, 1 and a half. So negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, just off my graph. Negative 3, 15, 6, 1 and 1 graph that, but negative 6, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6, 1 and a half. So I have a lot of points for that branch on the right, but that's okay. And this one would go something like that. So I also just realized that for my domain, I forgot my negatives. This is skipping the negative 2 value, not the positive 2 value. So just fix that. Quickly so you can reference that. So the domain for this one should actually be negative infinity to negative 2 and negative 2 to positive. I just forgot my negatives. So it's just, again, fix that so if you go back to reference it, reference it, it is correct.